Today we're making a beat using some of the new features in Studio One Pro 7 and in the style of John Bellion's new song, Kid Again. Let's go. Okay, so here I have the song in Studio One, and the first thing I'm going to do is detect the tempo. So we're gonna use the detect tempo feature here. Go over to, I've already used it, but go over to audio. It's gonna be under audio bend, detect tempo. And then if you open up the inspector window, it should tell you here at the bottom what it is. So 100 BPM, let's go ahead and type that in. Okay, so I'm not gonna play the whole song, but I do wanna play you a little snippet here because this pretty much captures the essence of what this is and what I wanna sort of replicate. So check it out. So we have an awesome guitar kind of chopped up and we have some really cool hip hop -y kind of acoustic drums. So that is what we're aiming to create today. Okay, so first things first, let's open up the browser, go over to the splice tab. And then what I'm gonna do simply is I'm gonna take this entire song and drag it into the search with sound area. Okay, so here we have some sounds, but I wanna refine this a little bit more because essentially I'm looking for a guitar loop that I can chop up myself. So let's go over to instruments, let's select guitar. And then under genres, we can do pop and hip hop, so right there. So I went through a couple here and this one by far is my favorite. Now I am going to untime stretch it because at 100 BPM, which is what I'm on now, it's too slow. This sample is at 145. We'll conform it a little bit later, but check it out. That has a lot of potential, so let's go ahead and drag it over to my session. Okay, so I know John's song was originally at 100, but I believe this is too fast for what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and click on this track, the loop track, tempo. Let's make it so it's at time stretch. And then this is going to be on Elastic Pro format. This is a good algorithm for this. So, and let's bring this down. That feels a lot better to me. Okay, so this sounds really good to me, and I am gonna come back and chop it up a little bit later, but right now I wanna focus on making sure I get a nice drum groove, a nice pocket, which is incredibly important in this kind of genre. Okay, so check it out. I found this little hi-hat loop on Splice, and it has exactly the pocket that I'm looking for. I'm gonna layer this up with another hi-hat. I think I already have one here in my template. All right, so super simple. I'm just looking for something a little bit more static and to give it a different kind of texture. So I'm gonna open up the piano roll here or the note editor as Studio One calls it. I'm gonna open up the macro section and then using my macro toolbar here, which I'll link down below, I'm gonna go over to hi-hats. I'm using sample one and let's do it eighth notes. But I want this in alternating velocity. So let's use that macro. And now let's combine both of these together. Just adds a little something different. Okay, next up we need a kick and a snare. And again, the process here is the same. I went over to Splice, I looked up for some boom bap sounds. And the cool thing is that once you get there, you can just simply drag them over from here into the impact pads, which is what I'm gonna be using here. Okay, from here, let's go over to the quantize menu and I don't want these hard quantize, but I do want them on time. So I'm gonna set the start parameter here to 70, hit apply, and then we should be where we need to be. Okay, so one of the things that I like to do a lot is I like to send all of my drums from a drums bus to a reverb send, or a reverb effects bus rather, because it just kind of makes them feel like they're in the same room and this is incredibly important whenever you're kind of creating these acoustic drum sort of, you know, arrangements. A lot of times a set is going to be in a room with overhead mics, with room mics, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna go over to my drums bus here and I'm basically going to do audio destinations. I'm gonna send them to my beat room verb. Let's lower that down. Just sounds a little bit more cohesive in my ears. Okay, now it's time to go back up to the sample. And what I wanna do is I wanna chop this up. I never wanna leave my samples, at least in, in my production. I never like to leave them the way they are. I like to kind of mess around with them even if it's just a little bit to create my own pattern. So here's what we're gonna do. First thing is I'm going to use another one of my toolbars. I'll also link this one down below as well. It's called the productivity toolbar. And from here, I'm gonna go over to my chop sample macro and I'm probably gonna do one fourth. This will probably be a good one for this. So boom, it does a whole bunch of magic. And now we get a bunch of sample chops. But here's what we have to do. I'm gonna select all of them, hold the shift key first and last, and then we're gonna set them on the same choke group so they don't overlap. From there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply play these chops and then use this color palette here uh, thing at the top to sort of differentiate the chops that I wanna use, so. That's a really good one, so I'm gonna make it green so I remember. That's also a good one. Not that one. 
That's also a good one. Yep, I'll take that. Not that one. And we'll take that one as well. And it looks like it just repeats on the top. So we have... Okay, let's go ahead and I'm gonna quantize these 100% to the grid simply because I want the timing of when I hit these pads to be uh, aligned to the grid. The actual timing of the sample is embedded within the MIDI, so that's why it's okay this time around. Now, because I really like this sample loop, I'm just gonna go ahead and commit to it. So using, again, this toolbar at the top, we're gonna go over to conversion, MIDI to audio. And the cool thing about using this sort of built-in feature here is that I can always turn it back to MIDI if I need to. As you can see here, I have the MIDI still embedded. So at any moment, I can right click, transform back to instrument track, and then we're right back to MIDI if I need to re-chop for whatever reason. What I am going to do here immediately, because I know that I want to layer this with more things later on, is I'm going to add an EQ, and I want to sort of filter this out a little bit. Okay, so I made it sound really thin, and right now it doesn't sound very good, but I want to layer this with more sounds later on that I know are gonna be taking up some of this space, and so really, this is sound, it doesn't sound really good right now, but it will later on, trust me. Okay, with this in place, I think the next logical step to go from here is to add some bass. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what notes we need to be playing, which requires us to understand what key we are in. And so, the good thing is that this sample, they kind of labeled it for us, C minor, Okay, but I do want to verify that a little bit more. So I'm gonna go over to my sample chop here, right click, go over to audio, and then detect chords. Okay, so here's maybe a little moment of improvement for Personas if you're watching. I love that we have the ability to detect chords, but I don't think they're always accurate. What I mean by this is that knowing what I know, the little that I know about music theory, if this isn't C minor, there is no way that we could have an F because an F major chord is not part of a C minor scale. It'd have to be F. F minor. It looks like it is though, because it did detect the C minor down here at the end. And so if we are in C minor, let me go ahead and set that in there, right here, there we go. Then all I have to do basically is just play notes that fall within the C minor scale on this bass. Now I'm not really a bass player, so I know I'm gonna mess up. So I'm gonna open up this record panel and then make sure that my record mode is set to takes to layers and that my instrument loop record is set to record takes. And you'll see what happens here when I do that. So let's go ahead and record some stuff. Okay, so as you can see here with the takes layers option, it just kind of loops over and over. And every time that we loop around, it just pushes it down to a layer. And from here, it's as simple as maybe highlighting the areas that I want to create the master take. That last part could be a little bit better. So let me see if I can get it from this one. That'll do. And then from here, we can just close this. And then because it already crossfades it, we can just simply hit Command plus B to basically consolidate this whole thing. However, I do want to add a little bit of processing. So let's go ahead and bring up a guitar rig. From here, let's go over to input sources, bass, and I just want like a clean, but there we go. This probably will do it. Little grit. Okay, so from here, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add a plug in here called Track Spacer, which essentially is going to help make that kick cut through. So we're going to set the kick as a trigger by going over to the kick plus button here, side chains, and then let's look for that plug in. So bass guitar, boom, there it is. And then what will happen now is that every time the kick hits, it'll carve out those frequencies from that bass. It's actually really awesome. And then from here, what I also want to do is go over to my drums bus. There's this plugin called the Voice of God from UAD, which I think is really awesome. It adds some harmonic content, just beefs up those drums. This bass guitar can use a little beefing up. So there's a bunch of saturation plugins that you could use for this. But one of my favorites is an oldie but a goodie. It's called Sausage Fattener.
Okay, from here, I want more layers to this chop sample to give it more depth and texture. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and add maybe one of those uh, new VSTs that we got. This might work. Okay, so what notes do we play? If we are in the key of C minor, then what's probably going to happen based on the chops that I created here, it's probably going to be a C main, uh, minor chord. And then probably if this detected an F, it's probably going to be an F minor chord. That's what I'm thinking. So let's go ahead and record this. I am going to go over to the new scale features here. Let's go ahead and set this to natural minor, snap that to the scale. And then what I want to do is only do the in scale. And so what will probably happen is that it's going to be a two chord progression. I'm thinking so C minor and then F minor. So that works. So let's go ahead and record some of that. Okay, so for these chords, I use a sustain pedal so I don't have to extend them. They sound fine. However, I am going to go over here to the quantize and again, just set this to 70. I don't want these perfect, but I do want these on time. So apply. However, I think we can do better. Let's go ahead and maybe shift this up an octave. I kind of want this to be a little bit higher. And then uh, same thing here, but we could probably maybe bring this one down for a, an inversion. You know what? I'm going to reserve this MIDI for later because I did play some bass notes, but I'll probably want to maybe add those to some other sound. Right now, kind of what I'm thinking is making this more of like a top end kind of sound. Right, so something like that. Let's go ahead and add an EQ. I wanna filter this out a little bit. I think it's a little distracting at the moment. And then let's go ahead and also add some sort of um, delay. Okay, cool. That sounds great. However, I'm still missing some like lower bottom end vibe feeling here from these instruments. Let's go ahead and bring something else. Now, I've been itching to use, here it is, Sky Keys. I bought this off of like some ad or whatever, but it actually sounds really good. So shout out to dude who made it. I think that'll do. I do want to lower this down actually, so. Yeah, there we go an exact duplicate, we could just use a chop or the, the loop parameter here to duplicate that. And so now here's what this sounds like together, the music. Like the sample sounded good by itself, but this definitely adds another layer of depth and texture, which I think makes it more interesting. All we need now, I think, is an extra little maybe something because I like to differentiate my choruses from the verses or whatever. And I think what would be really good here is maybe like a, a single C note to be impedaled over and over just to kind of add a little bit more movement. So let's see. Okay, so check it out. I ended up recording the guitar, but after playback, it just sounded a little bit too distracting. So I ended up just chopping it up at certain sections and making it more of a rhythmic accent thing. And so by itself, it sounds like this. Right, so then from there, I added an archetype Cory Wong, which is basically just a guitar multiprocessor, which makes it sound like this. A little overdrive, a little reverb. From there, I added an EQ just to take out some of the top and bottom end, which actually needs to be the first one in the chain. And then finally, another delay, little echo boy at a, at a quarter note. And so this is what it sounds like at the end. And then together, the whole beat sounds like this. But there you have it, my friends. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button. But also, if you want to see all the new features that came included in Studio One Pro 7, then make sure to watch this video right over here.